Throughout the 1990s and the early 2000s, role-playing video games were in the ascendancy. Square and Enix were two of the companies leading this revolution, but as the genre exploded in popularity, almost every single major Japanese publisher had their own flagship franchise. Nintendo had Fire Emblem and Pokemon, Capcom had Breath of Fire, Konami had Suikoden, and Namco had Tails. Around this time, there was such a clamour for more and more games within this ever-popular genre, and smaller companies attempted to muscle in and carve a name for themselves. One of those was Nipponichi Software. They had been producing a variety of games since 1994, but their preference was for tactical and strategic games, and when a game called Disgaea launched on the PlayStation 2 in 2003, it showed that they had well and truly found their groove. Even though it didn't ever hit the heights of games like Final Fantasy X, Persona 4 or Dragon Quest VIII in terms of sales, Disgaea stands as one of the best regarded Japanese role-playing games to have launched on the PlayStation 2. Critics and fans enjoyed its wicked sense of humour and fun character designs, and there was also significant praise for its tactical, turn-based combat and its detailed progression and class system. And it was because of this reception that Nipponichi were encouraged to build the franchise out, something they had previously tried to do with Marl's Kingdom. Now, almost 20 years on, Disgaea has grown in significant fashion, and Disgaea 6, Defiance of Destiny, has just released in Japan on the PlayStation 4, with its worldwide Switch release coming in just a few months. But while we wait, Nipponichi has just released an interesting spin-off called Disgaea RPG. This was released in Japan just over two years ago, and it has been growing from strength to strength ever since. The global version is now available on iOS and Android devices, and it has already been downloaded more than 500,000 times in just over a week. Throughout this video, which has been sponsored by Bold Trend Games, the publishers of Disgaea RPG, we will talk in more detail about what the game is and why you may be interested. But please, keep in mind that this is not any kind of formal review or critical assessment. If you are interested though, based on what you see, or would just like to support the channel, please make sure to check out the game using the download link in the description and comments section below. Your continued support for this channel means so much to us. Now, even though Disgaea may have a certain degree of success in Japan and around the world, Nippon Ichi Software produced Disgaea RPG as a way of making more people aware of the franchise. And it's for that reason that it serves as a halfway house, deviating slightly on the typical genre, but still keeping many of the classic hallmarks like the witty dialogue, ridiculous metrics relating to levels and damage, and some of the classic features such as character reincarnation and the ability to lift and throw characters. It means that unlike the main numbered Disgaea games, which are tactical RPGs, Disgaea RPG positions itself as a free-to-play, active-time, turn-based RPG where parties of five characters come together in order to defeat waves of enemies that present themselves. This particular formula should be very familiar to those who have played other mobile games like Dissidia Final Fantasy Opera Omnia for example, and it uses a gacha mechanic for the acquisition of characters which is a common approach in Final Fantasy Brave Exvius and its follow-up War of the Visions. And on that note, there are quite a few characters that can be acquired, with many planned for release in coming months and years. These range from varieties of Prinny through to gargoyles, dragons, and of course, many of the classic protagonists and antagonists from the various installments such as the famed mid-boss. And one of the cool elements is that as soon as you boot up Disgaea RPG, you are greeted with not only the customary humour, but are given the chance to have the focal point of your party be one of those classic protagonists from all the way across the franchise. There are 10 to choose from at this point, but even though it is randomised, you are able to keep re-rolling until you get the one that you want. As my entry point to the Disgaea franchise was with that original game back on the PlayStation 2, even though many of the newer protagonists were quite appealing, the Hull was the natural pick for me. And as part of the story, it was so great to see him reunited with Flon and Etna, who were also introduced in that first game, and act as guides in Disgaea RPG. They will help you get to grips with the various mechanics and content options, and encourage you to put down a pretty uprising before it's able to gain any steam. 
After making it through that initial tutorial, you will gain access to numerous options and will be greeted with a rather familiar piece of music. You will also find that there are a handful of beginner missions that when complete will not only give you access to a decent amount of Hell, the in-game currency, Nether Quartz, which is used for summoning new characters and some items, but also a 4-star Etna. There are also plenty of daily activities to complete, as well as copious amounts of login bonuses that offer a wide array of rewards. But the place that will no doubt gain the most focus is the Dimension Gate. It's through here that you will gain access to a brand new story which focuses on you, a human, and your quest to try and create the ultimate overlord. Right from the off, the new story pulls from the past as the Prison Rangers, who appeared as a boss in the original Disgaea as a parody, of course, of the Power Rangers, appear as the first boss, even though they are planned to be the last boss for comedic effect. After they fail dismally in their attempt, you then begin your quest in earnest to create the ultimate overlord, and this aspect of the game is very similar to what you'd expect from a traditional Disgaea experience, with references to the past like Lahal's feminine side from Disgaea 2, and plenty of sass. The Dimension Gate also grants access to Netherworld history, and this was a pretty smart inclusion for both veterans of the franchise and newcomers. On the one hand, it allows those who have the experience to relive prominent storylines from the past games in this updated fashion, and for those who are a bit green around the years, they offer an abridged version of those stories, helping you to get up to speed with who various characters are and how the wider story of Disgaea is all connected. Taking advantage of established norms within the genre, each story is segmented into chapters and stages, and within each combat stage, which has a designated cost to play, you will square off against a group of enemies with rewards granted for how successful you are during the subsequent battles. You're also able to select a fellow player to take into battle as a companion, but once the battle commences, it's down to your setup and your actions to determine who will be the victor. And that's why it's worth spending a bit of time to ensure everything is in tip-top shape as there are numerous elements to consider. By using characters and gaining experience, they will of course become more powerful, but they can also gain unique skills and spells while making use of weapon skills once their proficiency reaches certain levels. These skills can then upgrade, increasing their effectiveness, but characters can also equip weapons and armor to boost their stats further. Each character, no matter their rank, also possesses Evility, a passive that is always active as long as they are within your party. The Harl, for example, grants a 10% boost to all the stats of the characters in your party, except speed, and Etna will deal 45% extra damage to female enemies. Incorporating an element that has been there since the beginning, when characters reach level 100, they can be reincarnated through Mao's lab. This allows them to go all the way up to apparently level 9999, giving them incredible stat boosts. The Dark Gate missions will also be quite useful for increasing the power of characters. Here you can undertake missions a limited number of times to boost things like experience, and you can use gate keys to unlock restrictions and keep powering through. You can also delve into the item world to strengthen weapons and armor, and when these elements are combined, you are able to start dealing ludicrous amounts of damage. Even the Dark Assembly makes a return, which is a nice touch, and it's here that you can try to unlock new content such as background music, increase your shop level, or enact temporary combat boosts. And speaking of background music, it was great to reminisce and hear some of the older classics again. In terms of gameplay, I mentioned that Disgaea RPG has moved away from the traditional tactical RPG genre. It's now adopted a more active style that's been used to great effect within many of the Final Fantasy mobile games. But even though the genre has changed, core Disgaea mechanics have been retained to help veterans feel more at home. You can use team attacks to deal considerable amounts of damage, and in addition to seeing some cool animations, there's also the added benefit of distributing the spoils. And that's very useful, because in Disgaea RPG, just like in the other Disgaea games, boosts are given to the character who finishes off the enemy. The game also makes good use of the quintessential lifting and throwing mechanic, this can be used to deal more damage as a collective, but it can also be used to level up weak characters because only the bottom character takes damage. It's also worth noting that because it uses an active time battle system, you can see who is going to get turns ahead of time, and this allows you to plan out the right time to use special moves. It also means you can be strategic with your targeting, but for the easier fights where you don't need to worry so much, it's recommended that you take advantage of not just the auto battle functionality, but also the option to increase speed by up to four times. In short, 
Even though it's a new format for the Disgaea franchise, the developers have managed to incorporate many of the classic franchise elements into the game, and if you're a fan of this style of game, it's worth checking out. If you download Disgaea RPG now, you can use the link in the description or use the serial code you're seeing on screen to get a new special starter pack. You'll get 300 Nether Quartz, 3 Crab Miso, 3 AP Potions and 3 Premium Summon Tickets. You can enter this from the menu under the other section and the code is valid until the 31st of May.